Hello and welcome. This is the Order of Operations with Rational's Numbers video, done Mrs. K's way. So we're going to be looking at how to combine rational numbers while using Order of Operations. Just as a little refresher to the start of our video, our Order of Operations has different steps. The first is to combine all grouping symbols, which means anything within a parentheses, bracket, or absolute value. Then we combine our exponents and roots. We multiply and or divide, and we add or subtract. And we also want to make sure that for our multiplying, dividing, and adding, subtracting, that we do it in order from left to right. Let's look at two examples. In this first example, I can see that there are numerous things that are going on. The first thing I notice that there are brackets. There is multiplication, multiplication, and then two subtractions. So by my order of operations, I know that the first thing I need to do is inside the brackets. So the first thing I'm going to notice is what is inside. I see that the two operations inside the brackets is one is subtraction and one is multiplication. I know that multiplication comes before subtraction, so that's where I'm going to start. First, I would like to combine my 2 and my 3 and multiply those together to get 6. Now, the really important thing to remember is now I need to continue to rewrite everything that was around my step so I don't lose any of my numbers. So I want to rewrite all of my different steps, all my different operations that are going on. Now that I've done that, I can continue on. So I see that even after combining my 2 and my 3 together and multiplying it, I still have brackets. So now I need to combine what is still left inside the brackets, which is 3.5 minus 6. So now I'm going to combine those and subtract to get negative 2.5. I still continue my brackets around here because I know that that is going to be multiplication later on. And I want to continue down and bring everything else down with it. So I still have my 1 half, I still have my negative 1 and 1 half. So now I look and I do see that there's brackets. And there's nothing inside my brackets except for one number, so I don't need to combine anything inside. However, I also know that my brackets mean multiplication. So I can see that 1 half times 2.5 is my next step, since multiplication goes before my subtraction. So when I'm multiplying this, it's not really easy for me to be able to multiply a fraction and a number. So I can either do two things. I can make one half into a decimal, or I can change negative 2.5 into a fraction. I'm deciding to go into a fraction, so I know that negative 2 is negative 2 wholes, and 0.5 is the same as 5 tenths. So I'm going to rewrite that as 5 tenths tenths. Continuing, I will be moving down all of my other steps and my operations so that I keep that all in order. Now in order to multiply, the next thing that I need to do is to make our, to make it easier on myself, I'm going to change negative 2 and 5 tenths into an improper fraction. So I'm going to multiply my 10 times my negative 2 to give me negative 20 plus 5 which gives me the negative 25 tenths as a fraction. Not to bore you, but again, I am now moving all of my other steps down. Now I can multiply across. I can, I can now multiply my 1 times negative 25 to get me my negative 25 and 2 times 10 to get me negative 25 twentieths. That's supposed to be a 0, not a 6. I now know that I will be taking that number and I will be subtracting it by 1 and 1 half. I'm losing a little bit of room but I need to be able to combine both my negative 25 twentieths and my I need to subtract my 1 and 1 half. So I am going to relocate this up top here and I'm going to rewrite this out. So negative 25 twentieths minus 1 and 1 half. 
What I'd like to do now is to now change my negative my one and one half to an improper fraction so that I'll be able to try to find a common denominator so that I can subtract both my twenty five negative twenty five twentieths with my one and one half. So I'm adding this extra step. So one and one half is the same as three halves. And I'm going to continue down all my other information. I now can, I still can't subtract actually because I still do not have a common denominator with both of these two numbers. So I'm just going to take and create an equivalent fraction for my halves and make it into twentieths. So by multiplying the two times 2 times 10 to get me 20. I'm also going to be doing that with the 3 to give me 30 twentieths. So in the end, I'm actually subtracting negative 25 twentieths minus 30 twentieths. I then can combine those two to give me negative 25 minus 30 gives me negative 55 over 20. I then can now take this number, and now I'm going all over the place, so hopefully your notes are a little bit cleaner than mine. But for negative 55 twentieths, I can divide both my numerator and my denominator by 5 to give me my final answer of negative 11 fourths. And that is my final answer for number, our example number one. Our second example is definitely one of those things where we see a lot of fractions going on here. So all we need to do is just take it step by step and make sure that we are finding equivalent fractions and making sure that we are following our order of operations. So what we notice here is that we have one third minus one fifth and three eighths minus one half. These are both separated by a fraction bar, which also symbolizes division. We can't exactly divide the fractions on top and the fractions on bottom yet because we can't divide those because I know I added parentheses up here to symbolize that we need to be able to simplify the top and the bottom of the fraction before we can combine them. So my first step is I'm going to create equivalent fractions so that I have both my numerator has the same denominator or my, and then my denominator of my large fraction on the bottom has the same denominator. So I'm going to do that quickly. I'm going to have both of the top fractions have an equivalent denominator of 15. So in order to get from 3 to 15, I had to multiply by 5. So I multiply my numerator of 1 also by 5 to get me 5 fifteenths. And I'm going to subtract that from 3 fifteenths. Before I combine, I'm now going to change for my bottom part of my large fraction. I'm going to have the same denominator of 8. So I can keep my 3 eighths and subtract... I go from 2 to 8 to get me 4 eighths. I am now going to reduce my numerator and my denominator by now subtracting my 5 fifteenths minus my 3 fifteenths. So I know that 5 minus 3 gives me 2, and I am left with 15 as well. On the bottom, I am going to be subtracting. 3 eighths minus 4 eighths, and that gives me negative 1 eighth. Now I'm left with just two fractions being divided by each other. Normally that would be great, except for we've talked numerous times how we do not care to divide fractions, but we instead like to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to rewrite my two fractions. But instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply 2 fifteenths by not negative 1 eighth, but by 
negative 8 over 1. Now when I multiply that out, I can see that 2 times negative 8 gives me my final answer of negative 16 over 15. I, of course, can then reduce that to negative 1 and 1 15th. Either way, my final answer is either negative 16 15th or negative 1 over 15. Thanks so much for watching Order of Operations with Rational Numbers done Mrs. K's way. Look forward to seeing you in class. Thanks so much for stopping by. See ya!